Uh, Col, t- you won your second All Ireland there this year, just gone. Uh, could you compare and contrast the two? Because you know, I'm sure your first one in 2016 was unbelievable, but probably the journey that you've had since to come back and win it again, and just a great uh, performance in the final, must have been very pleasing. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know what I'd be able to compare. Probably not. Really. I think the first one will always kind of hold a special place. Uh, a special place because like it is your first and you really it, it's um it's it's just a very surreal and it's very hard to explain. Um, the second one, look, it, it was um obviously very special as well. Um, coming from maybe different to like coming from compare coming from the two years, uh, like say seventeen and eighteen compared to fourteen and fifteen were very contrasting years. Like you know, fourteen and fifteen, you could say I was almost at the peak of my powers, or seventeen and eighteen, I was. I was crippled with injuries and for for a year and a half of it and the other half was I wasn't even on the panel so I suppose it's completely different backgrounds but um, no you, I don't think you can compare it because uh, I just think the first one will always have a, a small and special place there. Mm. And like th- this year of course you can always say I'm unbeaten in the championship you didn't play in that monster final against Limerick when the rest of the team got fairly well beaten. Yeah. Uh, like for, for you and your, your form throughout the year it felt like it just kept building and building and probably came to a height then against Kilkenny. What was the change for you this year? Um, I suppose the change, um, I suppose maybe a fresh voice and some fresh ideas maybe things like that. Oh, like I think a fresh voice always does freshen up um, because things can get stale. And maybe just more higher standards maybe um, implemented in around the panel and more people are brought in to do certain jobs. Um, there wasn't one person trying to do maybe four or five things. To, someone was brought in to do a specific job and they've done that to the best of their ability. Um, they're, probably, they're, they're probably the big things really. Uh, um, like the collective was, was this more or less the exact same as what it was in 16. I don't think there was much, much changes team-wise and things like that. But... Uh, I think Liam just kind of has a knack of bringing in really, really good people. Like if he's not comfortable in an area, he'll bring in someone that is comfortable in that area. Like so, I think that makes a big difference. Did you enjoy the role of being the spare man in the second half against Kilkenny? Was that towards the end? Did your hamstring go? It looked like he got shot in the leg. Yeah. Did, but did you enjoy that role? Oh, absolutely. What cornerback wouldn't? <laughs> it was great. Like usually, like it was a different. It was probably one, a very different all Ireland to the last the couple I played because usually you're stuck in the corner yourself and the fella, and it's off you go, lads. Whoever wins. Uh, but it was nice to get to go out and do a bit of hurling, like you know, like uh, all I want to do was hurl the ball and things like that. Like so, it's great to actually uh, get to do that because you could have ten minutes where there's no ball poked on you in the corner, or you could have ten minutes where every single ball is poked and you're absolutely flat. So it was nice to, uh, it was definitely nice to get to play that role. Yeah, I probably know the answer, but what's the thing brought up most about the All Ireland final to you this year? Oh, sure, myself and uh, myself and Richie, I suppose, sending off like that's probably is the the main talking point uh, at the time, but. Sure, like as I said at the time, like I, I wouldn't want to see him go. Like, like Richie's on the top four, it's ever come out like any. And I prize myself on uh, on marking really top top inter county players. So I was always going to love the challenge. So it's just a pity, pity for him personally as well. Like that he, uh, it was it was taken away from him like that because look, it's eleven months of training. You don't get paid for it. It's it's all, it's um it's a lot of commitment and for that to be kind of t- for it to end like that for him is very disappointing. Like. Mm-hmm. So I'll just rewind back to when you first came onto the Tipperary panel and I remember my brother Paddy who would have been a cornerback with you there for a number of years he was saying when you when you were first coming in it probably was you were, probably weren't the most obvious guy to step up straight away and be an intercounty player but he said even just the gym stuff you seem to like respond really well to that and he mentioned to me now and this mightn't be exactly on the money because my memory but he said that even stuff like in the gym your jump had almost an extra half or an ex- maybe even double like was it stuff like that that, that kind of transformed you or do you even recall that <laughs> um yeah like there is there is some things in the gym like my jump and stuff like that is is um is i suppose a bit it's a bit higher than other lads but did it come from a lower base where you t- where you made a massive jump in terms <laughs> of have, yeah so like like i would have been like i'm still not exactly uh, that big but i would have been literally a whippet when i first started in 14 like i'd say i was probably 72 or 3 kgs like like i'm over 10 kgs heavier than that now like or maybe about twenty at the minute, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so like I would have came from a really low base of that, but uh, I did make. I don't remember I made massive strides. All right, like like when I first started with tip, I kind of had an idea in my head that I would uh, I would kind of pick someone and follow kind of their lead. So I kind of almost picked Paddy Mayer, yeah, which might be a bit outrageous in the gym because of the sizing, but I kind of I literally went training with Paddy almost I, I done I done the gym sessions uh, with Paddy or done as close to him as I could or even the running sessions so I could, and I had it in my head as I if I can keep up with someone like Paddy Mayer 
this might go all right like so I kind of went in with that with that attitude and uh, yeah I would have made massive massive grounds in that, res- in that respect as well like Lucas was there at the time who was who was, uh, who was top class so like I had plenty I had plenty there to mot- motivate me anyway yeah that Lucas Curzon scene who's gone to Galway of course but you, you kind of talked there a little while ago about how you pride yourself on marking the best players I suppose the day that you were announced country wide was the day you marked Henry Shefflin that league final in 2014 if I'm right in saying yeah. coming into that game like you, you played very very well in that game coming into that game did you expect that out of yourself and did you know you were marking Shefflin um, I remember the week over uh, Eamon O'Shea kind of called me over and just kind of said look uh Okay, Kenny might will probably try and, and uh, target you because you're you're young and new, uh, so just be aware of that. And kind of he just kind of said, look, if if I was Brian Cody, I'd probably put Henry Sheffield on you. So I suppose like a young a young kid in nineteen, Mark one of the greatest hurlers ever, come around like it, it wouldn't well, it wasn't a bad tactic. But I suppose like I I suppose <laughs> I don't know I I'm kind of maybe mentally different. Like I I only love that like. Yeah. Like, I only love a challenge, yeah. Like the harder the challenge, the better for me. Like, like I get more, I get actually get more of a kick out of something. The harder something being like, um. So like I was actually relishing it. Like, like it was. I kind of thought about it at first, alright, and just. But then after a few minutes, I was like, grand, bring it on, like. John, like, sure, look, if you're gonna, if you're gonna succeed in in sport, like you have to take out the best, and like Henry Shefflin, is Henry Shefflin like? Just mm-hmm. like, there's not much more you need to say in it, so. Um, but yeah, after Mark and him, I, I kind of really announced, my, I suppose, my arrival on the stage. Mm. Yeah. And that remains your, does that still remain your, your profile picture on Twitter? Or do you even still have it? But like, there's a picture of you and yeah. him tossing. Yeah, there's a picture of him holding my jersey, me holding his. I actually, how did I put that up originally was, I remember James Owens gave a free against me, saying I was holding him, and I was, oh, which I actually wasn't. It was actually the other way around, because I had to run off the field to get around Henry. And at the time, I think I remember thinking, well, I'm not, I remember seeing the picture and I was like, hmm, I'm going to put that up. <laughs> and it's been there since. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the Tipperary way, not accepting that you were wrong. You have to, you have to tell someone else they're yeah, wrong, I think. Exactly, exactly. And uh, like, so who would have been your influences in the club? Obviously, the Doyles, big name in Holy Cross, Bally Cahill. But who would have been your more immediate kind of recent influences as you were growing up? Um, I suppose... I suppose I suppose that my my uh, fam my father probably would have been a very big one. Like he would have brought me down to hurling field uh, first off, and like he would have kind of drilled hurling into into me and and the brothers. Um, I I would have looked, looked, looked up to the older brothers an awful lot. Sure, like just just four boys in my family, so I was the youngest, so I was constantly like they would have been out poking. No, they wouldn't have let me poke with them, <laughs> but so that would have made me pure, really eager and really motivated to get better at my hurling, so I could poke with them like um. Then I surpassed them, thank God. <laughs> but uh, then in the club, I suppose, yeah, look, she had the dials. Um, like Jack O'Dial was a massive, massive hurler in our club for years and years. That'd be John's uh, grandson. Um, the short Declan Carr was there as well. Um, like there was plenty, plenty of really good people around. Like and then even the primary school, you had the likes of Timmy Delaney, uh, like your own club man there. Uh, he uh, like he, you know, he eat, sleeps, and drinks hurling. I was, I was, uh, used to play with us. I'd say uh, every day, and all day if he could. Like, you know, I don't know, did he teach us much? It's only, only inside and hurling. Um, so there was plenty of people like that. Like, and uh, I suppose like there was always the John Dial thing as well. Like, so you know, like John, he had all earned medals. So like, uh, from a young age, like I would have always kind of wanted to maybe almost be better than John Dial if I could. Like, even though I was actually playing in the fours as a younger, as a young lad. Yeah, actually, yeah, and I will come on to that, how you ended up midfield um, in 2018, if I remember correctly. But, so 2014, the replay at All-Ireland, uh, the Hawkeye final, all that kind of stuff, coming really, really close. 2015, uh, losing the semi-final. Just, just talk about those couple of years before, obviously, climbing the mountain top in 16. Mm, yeah, so I suppose four, 14, was, um, 14 was an unbelievable year. Like, like I remember when I went in, we played, I think, Westmead in the first, very first challenge game over in the rag, and I was kind of lucky, um, I suppose, because I don't know, was it Paddy or, or Mickey Cal was injured at the time, so like I was trying to displace two, two of the great, one, two of the best cornerbacks ever came out with tip, like, uh, which was no uh, easy, easy shape, like, so I was kind of lucky that one of them, I think, was injured at the time, so I got my break to kind of start that game, and then that rolled on to the next challenge and next challenge, and. I kept kind of starting all the games, and I, it was kind of the two boys were nearly fighting for their spot then because they were both injured. So I was actually I was very lucky to kind of get the break. Um, and she looked the more games you're playing, the more confidence you kind of get. So it looked it all literally fourteen kind of rolled all into one. Like it just 
it was it was a really uh, it was a really enjoyable roller co- coaster. Like I was young, I was buzzing around. Um, it was great. It was it was a completely different atmosphere I've ever been in. An, an environment like such a setup with, with tape like like that. Um, and just stuff that was great support from the older as like Conor Manny, Shane McGrath, Shane McCann, and these lads were very, very good to me. Like when I was younger, Owen Kelly, John O'Brien, like there was just loads of them that were very, very good to me. Like um, I gave me great support. Like so, it was a uh, it was an unbelievable atmosphere, and just, like it was it was really made for you to strive and really to develop and grow. Like and uh, sure, like and I was living with Mickey Callan and like Paddy, I was very close to Paddy. So like there was if I if I ever needed any sort of advice. Like I didn't have to turn very far. Like I remember in, we played before we played Cork, the Ireland semi. I Mark Larry. I was out wing back. I Mark Larry. I remember going to Paddy after the match, just saying, "Jesus, Paddy, I'm gonna get dropped off the panel." Like he was like, "What?" He was, I was like, "I'm definitely not gonna be starting." Like I'm after getting destroyed. Like Larry absolutely destroyed me. Like he did. He didn't even score more. He scored two points, but he hit everything. I couldn't get a finger on him. Like and John, you know, like Paddy just kind of <laughs> threw down around me and just said. Let's go back over the last six months. I think you'll be fine. Like it's only one trend. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then, like you already talked about, how great it was to win twenty sixteen. Like seventeen didn't go great for Tipperary, and I suppose that league final hammering was one of the, the big turning points. And you end up getting dropped off the panel. I mean, for yourself, that was obviously a very very tough period. And like, is it a case of you have to look at your your own kind of conduct and and then also, I mean, what's going through your head at that time, and how did even things get to that? Um, I don't know. I suppose like um, after winning the Ireland, like when we get bit, got bit by Cork, there was such it was such a shock. I suppose and it was a real kicking in the heat for Tipperary um, after winning the Ireland the year before, like and Cork to catch us and uh, like it was just it was it was a, there was a fierce bad kind of backlash from it in in Tip. Like they were like we were very disappointed with ourselves and and the people were very disappointed with us. Um, and then like like I got injured in in that game. And basically, I would, like I was going to be out for three months. I was in a, I was in a, I was in a leg brace, and I just went out with the the club lads the following weekend. And uh, I suppose Mick, Mick didn't really didn't really deem it okay. Like at the time to go out. Now I I I kind of, I'd obviously still disagree with it, but obviously, but something else kind of, something else kind of occurred on the on that weekend. It was actually nothing to do with me, but unfortunately, I, I was there, so I was I was bound, my name was always bound to be dragged into it and that kind of maybe forced Mick's hand a small bit um so like that was tough like that was a that was very very tough like so I was I was injured out for a couple of months and I was kind of left off I was left off the panel so I was away from that support network so I was almost so look you're virtually kind of on your own you're kind of left out in the left out in the dark on your own with an injury um now obviously the medical staff didn't like I was obviously work it was still got to work with the lads but it's not really the same like when you're not in the that team environment it's very hard to get yourself back um, get yourself back from from an injury. Um, like I like was a very bad injury. Like I was out for three four months, so that was tough. Um, and then eighteen eighteen then was like my ha- hamstring started kind of getting at me in eighteen. I was out midfield, which was absolutely fine. I didn't mind it, but I think there was I suppose it would, we were kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul in the backs. Like like the, we were kind of we were we were conceding a bit in the backs. So uh, it was it was a weird it was a weird one for me. Like I like I knew realistically I felt like I should I need to go back to corner back to be honest. Um, but like I was just delighted to be able to back to play and compete in some regards. So like they were two, yeah, there was there were two tough years, I suppose. And I suppose, like, is there anything where you're like, if I go back my own, I do things differently myself. You know, obviously there was a couple of high profile things that happened as well. Um, and I don't necessarily want to go through mm. all those bit bullet, you know, bullet point by bullet point. But is there kind of yourself, right? I've I've learned a lot from my own behaviour too. Well, I have. Um, I suppose okay, I have learned a lot. But like the, the couple of whole high profile things, like it's guess if people actually knew the ins and outs of them, they wouldn't have been so like. Look, well, for, first of all, if I didn't play for Tipperary, they'd be nothing said. They wouldn't be. No one would know anything. Um, but like, I suppose I was kind of unlucky in ways, and maybe just um, maybe just bit of a, a bit of um bit of an experience maybe on, on, on a few fronts of how I ended up getting into one or two situations. But like to be honest, like I didn't I didn't actually really do anything in New York. I kinda got dragged into just got dragged into something and in into one thing and another York was just a bit of misjudgment out of me really. That was it that was it like but like I do I do think it's kinda unfair that like it is an amateur sport. We are people at the end of the day like our Lives are completely under scrutiny. The media and, and and the media and the public's eye, um, 
like you know, it's, it's not really fair. Like, like we've families and careers and stuff to to worry about as well. Like, mm. and then just looking forward to, to 2020 and your own appetite for hurling. You know, viewed it in the prism of the amount of scrutiny you get. Are you still buzzing for it going forward? Are you still looking forward to more hurling? Oh, absolutely. I'm looking forward to hurling, not looking forward to the running around the muck. Like, but like, uh, absolutely. Like. I, I like I want to win as much as I can. Like I've all, I've always been that way. Like uh, you might I might have the motivation to go running in the muck in December, but like who does? <laughs> in fairness, I don't think anyone does. But it's just something you have to do. Um, so no, I'm I'm looking forward to getting back, uh, getting back training. Like because look, it's it's great crack as well. Uh, it's really enjoyable. Like the boys, there's a great group there, great management. Uh, it's a really it's look it's an enjoyable time to play for Tipperary, especially when you're winning. It's easy to say maybe when you're winning, but. Like you'd miss the banter or train, miss the banter in the gym and things like that. Like all the, all the, all the pros that come with a, a team environment. So no, you definitely like motivation will. I don't think will ever be Carl Bear's problem. If it is, I'll probably have to retire. Thanks very much. Appreciate oh, Shane. Thanks.